Okay, today I'm just gonna show you guys, many of you guys see a lots of video on the YouTube about the web server. I'm gonna show you the same thing right in here with one addition one, that I connect to them to the Echo. Pretty much you can see multi version of this thing on the uh, YouTube. I am using the code that is belong to the another gentleman. His name is RUI. I'm going to show you more detail about his name and his website. I got his code, modify his code. I change them from the two relay to the four relay and I add a display, a two type. One is going to be this node um, module that I do have with the OLED display right in here that has a relay be connected to it right now. I can be connect, uh, turn on with my phone or Right, just like this. If I go to the address that it shows at the beginning, let me just turn them off and turn them on again. It said it's searching for the IP address. When it's coming back up, it's going to show the IP address with a port number. If I type that one in my browser, it's going to introduce me such a thing like this. Then I can just, with the clicking on each one of this button, the relay corresponding to it is going to come on or it's going to go off and the result is being showing on the display. The point of this video is not showing you how to create a uh, web server. The point is connecting them to the Echo. Now I'm going to show you what did I modify on the code that I do have that it capable me to doing such a thing. So the same thing is happening right in here with a big display. The big display has the same thing. It has a, uh, a relay shield in the back of it. It has a node module right in here, ESP8266, and the display that is using the I square C. This display costs you about $10. The module is gonna cost you, ESP module from the Amazon is gonna cost you about $5, and the relay shield is gonna cost you about $5 too. Make sure the relay shield that you buy, if it's gonna be four relay or eight relay or two relay, they're gonna be activated with a high, or positive pulse, not the negative. For instance, this relay shield that I do have is get activated with a negative and it will not gonna work. They do have some other shield that it works with a bolt. Those are gonna be even better. Now, we are just gonna go back through the code right in here. I'm just gonna put this one on this side. Can you come into this side that they can? As I was saying, for instance, right now, I went to the, uh, this address with a port number right in here and I can click on either one of this. It shows the first relays on, second one, and the third one. The very first relay that I do have, it doesn't show the result on this display, and this is just a push button. Every time that I press on, the relay is gonna come on and gonna go off again. You can see the back of the unit too, the LED that is for the each relay corresponding to the position that they do have. For instance, right now, if I press off, they're gonna go off, the last one gonna go off, and then this one is gonna go off. So now I'm just gonna go back to the sketch that I borrowed it from this gentleman. His name is uh, right in here, R-U-I-S-A-N-T-O-S. This is the site that he does have. You can go to his site and you can get a similar code. The only thing that I add to his code, I add some stuff for the display that I'm not gonna talk about it today. I just want to show you guys on this video how can what you need to change on his code that you can get access from out of your network. To doing so, the thing that I did uh, when he does have in his code somewhere it said Wi-Fi server, he does have a AD right in here instead of the port. Change that one to the port and introduce a new variable with the name of the port. Pick up any random number between one till 65,500. Make sure that port is not being used somewhere else. In this scenario, I picked up 777. And then I add some more code right in here to his code that is printing out the port number for me to on the uh, serial monitor that I do have. So if I just go to my serial monitor, clear this thing up, reset this unit, Node, my, my, node, you can see right now, it's showing me the internal address and the port number. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this screen, reset the node module, and I'm just gonna get the, my IP address right in here. It's coming up after a while because it's searching. 
is finding the IP address and the port number. So I'm just going to copy this thing and paste them in my browser. And it's going to present me with the same page. So what you need to do right now, you're going to go to your uh, uh, router. I don't know what brand router you do have. You're going to port forward this IP address with this port. You're putting them in there. If you're doing it correctly, if you go back again to your browser, type what is my IP address. Get that number that is coming up. Put a column in front of it and then the port number. You should be presenting with the same page, with this different. That this IP address that you're putting on the new one is going to be the IP address of your external network. You, I don't want to do it because I don't want to expose my external network IP address. You've been presented with this. If you presented with this, you're done. Okay. Now uh, we get to the point that you got your external uh, IP address and with a port number you end up with the same page. Remember that whatever it shows right in here is my internal IP address. That will not going to work. You should have your external IP address right in here with a port number that you pick. If it presented with a, such a page, you are done. Now we are going to go to the part that we adding the echo to the system. Uh, I already add a relay one for the first relay. I'm going to add a relay two for the second relay and you guys see the procedure that I'm going to go to. I do have another link for you guys right in here. You're just going to go to that link. It's going to present it with this page and then you have to log into your Amazon account. For me, when I click on this, it's directly taking me in without asking me for passport. For you, they will ask you for Amazon passport that you need to put in me. So when I get right in here, I have a bunch of the devices already been added before. I'm just going to add a new one. I call them Relay2. So I create a new one. I come down. I call them Relay Space 2. In the bottom, I can put Relay2 underscore endpoint. Remember that you, this, this section, you cannot have space. You can put underscore. No space for this section. In the top one was okay, and in description is okay too. I can put a relay, via controller, anything that you want. Doesn't matter what you put at the description. Something, this is for you, whatever you want to. Then I just go down and I pick up the uh, display category. That is gonna be your preferences too. I pick the switches. Then I just go down, I enable the power controller. Now I do have one section for the power on, one section for power off that it need to get filled up. I'm just going to go back to my browser that I had. And for instance, I said I pick up the second relay. Let's just assume this is the second relay right in here. I click on it. I copy this link right in here, control C and paste it you know, today for the on. Control V right in here. Remember that. This will not going to work because I'm using my internal IP address. This must be your external IP address. I'm going to modify this thing when the camera is away to show you that this code is working. But remember, this must be your external IP address, not internal. Then I can click on that same button to give me the off command, control C, bring it right in here, control V. Now, I'm asking Jerry to dot and show, show this thing for instance till I change my IP address to the external. Okay, I already brought the page up because I changed my internal IP address to the external and I don't want to post it in a YouTube. So I'm just going to show you what are the rest of the procedure is. So in the top right now I do have my external IP address and rest of the command. And then I come down and I click on the create the device and be done for this section. Next thing that we need to do, we just need to go to the uh, Alexa uh, app. You open in your Alexa app. Mm. Then you go to the scale and you search for the IR space controller right there. Since that I already installed them, I click on it. It said already been installed. For you guys, you click on it 
and he's going to ask you for password and everything you installing that skill like any other skill that you do have after you done with it you asking Alexa to go ahead and discover Alexa discover starting discovery this will take up to 20 seconds if you haven't already please enable the smart home skill for your smart device from the Alexa app Relay 2, and you can control it by saying, turn off Relay 2. Okay, now Alexa, turn on Relay 2. You can see the Relay 2 is on. Alexa, turn off Relay 2. Relay 2 goes off. Of course, the corresponding LED in the back of the unit is coming on too. Alexa, turn on Relay 2. Alexa, turn on Relay 1. I add Relay 1 before and it's just working as well too. That's it. That's, that's the way that you can add the echo to your uh, web server that you do have. One more thing that I need to mention is uh, we are using the external IP address. If your IP address is dynamic and is changing, the code is not going to work. The best way of doing it, use the DDNS, that is stand for the Dynamic Domain Network System. If you put that one, doesn't matter how many times your IP address change, then you're gonna be, it's working for you forever. 